Hello and welcome to part one of a series of tutorials where I will show you how to model a dinosaur. Now this is this is the dinosaur that we're gonna be making in the in this series. So this is this is a real good um this is a good exercise for creating quadrupeds and learning how to create quadrupeds. Now this is the dinosaur that we're going to be modeling in the in this tutorial when we're going to start and we're going to continue in the next series of tutorials. This is not going to be too difficult to model, so it, it shouldn't be too difficult to model it. The first thing to do is go online and find a series of images to serve as our references to use in the in the process of modeling. Now this is really helpful because it, it helps in the in the modeling process when it comes to getting all the anatomy and the details. Uh, getting all those details, also having close ups, different shots, uh different angles of the of the concept that we're gonna be working with. So I have a few pictures here and all these pictures you can download from my website. Now these don't belong to me, but uh, not really selling them to you. I'm not taking credit for these pictures, but you can use them anytime. You can download them from my website. Now this is the picture that I'm going to be using as my main reference. This is the one I'm going to be using in the side view. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's open Maya, of course. Now spacebar to get all the four views here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get the reference image. This is way of doing that is if you click in this icon. Another way if, is you go to image plane here and import image. I'm going to use this image. This is going to be the one that I'm going to be working with. So let's go back to the perspective view. Now I'll prefer to work with meters. By default, we're working with centimeters. So if you go to window, settings, preferences, preferences. Now you click, now if you click here, and here you have the and here you have the choice to change to from centimeters to meters. So now our picture is a little too small. So we're going to select the image in the viewport and we're coming here to the side and just type a number just to make it larger. I'm also going to maybe slightly bigger larger image here now also slide it on the X now I'm pressing the middle mouse button I'm holding it and I'm holding the middle mouse button and drag okay spacebar to go back to our four views here So let's start by creating a polygon primitive cube. Now pressing 5 for shaded mode. Now come here to the side and uh, let's add an extra division here. Set it to 2. Now let's scale it to more appropriately fit with the image that we got here. Now select faces and select this side. Now we're just going to delete that. 
Now select the whole object, go to edit, and click on the options box for the duplicate special. Now you're gonna get this menu. Just make sure that you have it set to instance and that all these numbers are this way. I have a minus negative one here for the X. Okay. So now whatever we do to one side is going to be mirrored to the other side. But we also want to double click on the move tool here. I'm going to switch to drag select. And I'm also going to enable reflection on the X. And make sure that preserve seam is checked. So that whenever we try to move anything that's here is not going to move. Now just press 3 to work on subdivision mode. And this is the time when we start shaping. Now this is what we're doing right now is just some simple blocking of the, of the shape that we want. So I'm working on the side view here and also perspective at the same time. Have those two open so that I can I can see better what I'm doing. Now I'm going to do is insert an edge loop. Go to Edit Mesh, Insert Edge Loop Tool. I'm going to use the side view and click maybe here. Now it's difficult to see on the side view, but but you can see it in the perspective. Now maybe another one here. Okay. I'm going to side view. I know it's difficult to see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable the grid by disabling the grid so that you can see the image better. So if you go to show and disable grid, it helps for you to see this better. Now we start just to, we start making some shape adjustments here to better match the image. Now I'm mainly working with the side view for now. All I'm doing is grabbing some edges and adjusting them. This might be really difficult to see, so I really, really recommend that you watch the video in high definition. You go back so I can see how that looks in our perspective view. So let's go back and check our pictures. Since we're in Maya, we're only working with our side view. That's why I have other pictures here that can help us when it comes to the time of shaping the frontal view. Now I couldn't find any frontal view images so that's that's going to make it a little more difficult for us to shape but i got this one this image is closest to resemble the frontal view so let's continue with our shaping process here we select that edge loop and move it down you select this edge loop, move that up. Let's insert an edge loop. If we go to Edit Mesh, Insert Edge Loop Tool, and insert that there. And now we continue with the shaping process. Making sure to making sure that you're looking at the at the reference image that we got there, so that we can close closely get to that shape. Uh, 
I'm constantly looking at the back picture so that I'm, I'm sure that I'm getting the shape the way I want it. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to insert a natural loop. I'm pressing G to to load the last selection. I'm going to continue to shape it so that I can get that the neck area here. And continue to shape. So this is going to be the neck area. Hopefully you can see this. Let's go back to perspective view. It, it's good to keep um, going from our perspective view to our side view so that so that we know that that the model is resembling the image. So basically here we have our a really basic blocking of the of the body. Now make sure you always save your scenes. It's a good thing to sh to save very often, just in case my crashes or anything of that nature. Now we're gonna stop here for now. In the next video, we're going to continue to shape, maybe get the the legs and uh, the tail and some more of the neck, so that we can get get going with the with our modeling process. Okay.